Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 FY2324 earnings conference call of the Karur Vaishya Bank. We have with us today from the management team of KVB represented by Mr. Ramesh Babu, MD and CEO, Mr. Natarajan, President, Mr. Chandra Shekharan, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Ram Shankar, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Jolfi Jose, Group Head Consumer Banking. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touch one phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. B. Ramesh Babu, MD and CEO, to take us through the highlights of the quarter of the quarter gone by, after which we will open the floor for the questions. Thank you, and over to you, sir. So thank you, Nero. So good evening to all of you. On behalf of Karur Vaishya Bank, I welcome you all to our bank's earning call for the quarter four of the financial year <clears throat> 2024. We have uploaded our financial results along with the presentation on our website, and I hope uh, you have had a chance to go through it in detail ahead of this call. We are pleased to share that our performance indicators are in line with our guidance that we had spelled out in our earlier quarters, and it's encouraging to note our consistent and inclusive performance well above our guidance on three metrics, growth, profitability, and asset quality. We are also glad to share that our balance sheet size has crossed one trillion during the year. The bank's total business stands at 1,63,536 crores as on 31st March 2024, as compared to previous year, 1,40,806 crore, registering a growth of 16%. The advances stand at 74,423 crore, and deposits grew to 89,113 crore, with a growth of 16% each. The bank's liability business constitutes to 54% of the total business of the bank. Deposit growth continue to remain one of the key focus areas for the bank, and you are aware that the bank had initiated various strategies for deposit growth, including establishment of acquisition channel for both term deposit and CASA growth. Our term deposit growth during the year is at 21%, and this is made possible on account of our continued focus on this segment. While our CASA acquisition numbers are progressing well, there is a depletion in the existing book of the CASA on account of it other opportunities available for the depositors, resulting in lower growth under this segment, which we are trying to overcome by better engagement strategies with our customers. The advances of the bank grew by 16% for the year, and it could be noticed that the bank has achieved this growth after a gap of 11 years, so it was 24% growth in advances achieved in 2013 when we were growing pretty well in the corporate at that time. The growth during the quarter was slightly lower, and this is on account of our conscious efforts in reducing low-yielding advances for better margins. It is heartening to see our consistent efforts in bringing inclusive growth across credit verticals has been rewarding well. Commercial loan book increased its share to 34% of the total loan portfolio, followed by retail with 24%, Agriculture at 23% and corporate loan book reduced to 19%, indicating our continuous shift towards granular portfolio. The commercial business grew by 21% over the previous year, as against 12% growth of the corresponding previous year. Our continued efforts in activating brand channel, which manages small business group with 5 crores exposure and business banking units, which manages exposures up to 25 crores, resulted in better performance. Besides consistent good performance displayed by Neo Business Team, KVB Smart, a non-brand channel under commercial banking, mainly sourcing business through open market channel, completed its first full year of operations. It is progressing with a portfolio of 126 crores and currently operating at Coimbatore, Chennai, and recently Hyderabad, Madurai, and Bangalore units also have been commenced, and the total team size is 48 numbers. 
The agriculture loan book had a growth of 17% year on year and achieved all targets and sub-targets under priority sector for all the quarters of the year. And priority sector advances as a percentage of A and B C as on 31st March 2024. While continuing our focus on agriculture dual loans, we have also started focusing on direct agriculture lending and sourcing business through fintech partners. The retail advance of the bank registered a growth of 18% during the year under review, as it is 16% over last year. Our efforts in making the products and processes market related has helped our brand channel to focus on this segment, supported by open market channel. Our co-lending Amazon BNPL program is performing well, and the book is around 1,000 crores now. Corporate and institution loan book had a growth of 5% only during the year, though initially in the first two quarters, CASA balances grew on account of withdrawal of 2,000 rupee notes. Subsequently, there were scrambles for sourcing low cost deposits. Industry witnessed customers choosing alternatives for investments rather than keeping in CASA accounts. Striking a balance between maintaining healthy margins and pursuing strategic growth opportunities is a challenge that we had to navigate last year. As you are aware, we preferred sustaining our growth momentum with healthy margins. In addition to shedding away low yielding advances of 1,415 crores, I repeat 1,415 crores, we also exited advances of around 200 crores on account of weakness, thus totaling around 1,600 crores, which comes to 2.15% of our advances during the year, and thus we have done the dual task of cleaning the book and optimizing the yields. Our new business model continued to perform well and I built a loan book of around 6,443 crore at the end of the financial year, and a precious metal division book stood at 674 crore. Transaction Banking Group specializes in cash management services, providing collection and payment products and supply chain finance for corporates of all sizes. In addition to participating in all three threats platforms for financing MSME vendors, DBG, by embracing digital technology, aims to leverage the partnerships with fintechs to drive growth. DBG supports the bank for a diversified portfolio and anchors top corporate relationships. Our partnerships for co-lending with NBSCs continue to perform well and loan book under this segment is around 1,900 crores. Currently, we have five arrangements and we are working with more tie-ups during the year. We had indicated in the last call that NIM be above 4% at the exit quarter of the current year. NIM improved to 4.19% sequentially by six basis points. It was 4.13% for the quarter three, uh, excluding one-off item. Our rebalancing of portfolios with more focus on better yielding granular secured advances in the RAM verticals has helped us to maintain the margins above 4% levels. The cost of deposits increased by 11 basis points sequentially as against 15 basis points guided by us in the last call. Yield on advances increased by 8 basis points during the quarter as against the guided 10 basis points. Yield on investments has increased by 17 basis points during the quarter. Other income for the quarter is reported at 388 crores. This includes a one-off item of reversal of depreciation on investments on SRs. That is 157 crores provided earlier, which resulted in a spike in the PPOP. The release is on account of reclassification of SRs into NPIs non-performing investments, as these SRs have crossed the time limit of eight years. The provision released under the head is consumed under the provision for NPI, and hence, it is net profit neutral. You are aware that wage revision as per bipartite settlement was signed during the last quarter. With respect to pension obligations, out of the estimated amount of 114 crores, we have already provided 70, 74 crores till quarter three, and the balance amount of 40 crores has been provided in the fourth quarter. In view of the wage revision, and also on account of 
drop in benchmark rates by 30 basis points, additional amount of 30 crores is to be provided towards meeting pension benefit obligations in the fourth quarter. With this, all liabilities with respect to wage revision have been fully provided for. Our normalized wage bill from the first quarter of the next year would be in the range of 325 to 350 crores, which works out to 1.35% of our estimated assets. For the quarter under review, we have provided a sum of 112 crores towards NPM migrations, standard assets, and prudential provisions. And credit costs work out to 0.65%. We estimate that for the current year, it would be in the range of 75 basis points as guided. As done in the last three quarters, we have provided a sum of 25 crores towards floating provision to meet any contingency, including ECL, and cumulative provision available under this is 100 crores. We have achieved ROA of 1.76% in this quarter. It could be noticed that our ROA has consistently improved from 0.19 in December 20 and grown sequentially in the last 13 quarters, which is a result of our concerted efforts in stimulating the various levers of ROA and enabled us to achieve this parameter well ahead of timelines. I am happy to share that we have declared a dividend of 120% as against 100% last year, and this is subject to shareholder approval. Our gross slippages during the quarter continue to be under control at 130 crore, which comes to annualize 0.67% of our loan book. With SMA 30 plus numbers at the lowest level of 201 crores, it is estimated that forward flow is likely to be minimal. We are confident that we will continue to keep the ratio below 1% as guided in our earlier calls. With our persistent focus on recovery from technically written off books, we were able to recover a sum of 132 crores during the quarter. Total recoveries during the year is at 341 crore as against 208 crores for 20 to 23. Due to lower slippages, recoveries, upgrades, and write-offs, our gross NPA has come down to 1.4%, and we expect that we will continue to maintain at below 2% levels. Our net NPA has come down to 0.4%, and we would continue to maintain net NPA at less than 1% of our loan book. Our standard restructured loan book is further reduced to 0.96% now of our loan book, and we hold a provision of 42% of the total restructured book. The additional provision towards pension obligations has slightly increased our cost to income ratio to 51.60, excluding NPA reversal item for this quarter. However, YTD year to date CAR is 49.68% excluding NPA reversal item, which is within our guidance range of 50%. Our CRAR Basel 3 continues to be healthy and is at 16.67%, providing us comfortable headroom for growth. Our digital transactions grew by 37% in financial year 24, and our share of digital transactions stands at 96%. We continue to add many new features in our Delight app, which is our customer onboarding application, and there are 2.4 billion registered users for our Delight app, and 5.22 million downloads for our Delight app. With regard to RBA's notification on investment in alternative funds, our investments at, as at 31st March is at 12 crore 60, 55 lakhs, 55 crores only, sorry, it is 12 crore 55, lacks, and we do not have any credit exposure to the companies where AAS had made downstream investments. Let me move on to what we intend to do in 24-25. Every bank has its own business model. Till few years back, our business mix was skewed towards corporate book, constituting 37%. We went for business transformation and a lot of initiative taken to granularize the loan book. Our corporate book has come down to 19% and 
as at the end of 31st March, with retail, agriculture and commercial taking higher share. Our focus would continue to be towards this approach going forward. As we have continuously improved our advances verticals in technology, processes, people and partnerships, a good momentum has been ingrained at all levels. However, this can be continued provided raw material that is deposits at low cost is available. Though there is no issue on the liquidity front, this is a challenge at what cost the funds would be available for lending. Rebalancing of portfolio would be continued, keeping an eye on the margins. We will be continuing our focus of growth with healthy margins Overall loan growth to be at 14% plus with adequate percentage of growth in deposits, ensuring CD ratio is maintained at around 85% during the current year. We have added 39 branches during financial year 24. With respect to branch expansion for the current year, we have planned opening 80 light branches and 20 regular branches in 2024-25, mostly in southern and western parts of the country. The light branches would help us to improve our penetration and bolster our liability franchise. Our non-brand channel Leo is one of our successful initiatives. To bring more synergy between brand channel and Leo, we have integrated operationally Neo into retail assets. This would facilitate branches to scale up more under retail assets. Now, across the bank, we would be in a position to source retail business through branch channel and open market channel. So though the plan is on the anvil, we will be implementing that in different phases during the year, this integration. With respect to the margins, we expect that to be at and around 4% levels till first half of the current year. Our loan book comprised of EBLR book of 44% and MCLR book of 42% any policy change would have an effect on the margins. Considering our branch expansion and additional manpower plan, our cost to income ratio would be around 50% in financial year 25. Our efforts on recoveries would continue and expect the momentum gained in last year would be retained in this year also. We have achieved ROI of 1.63 in financial year 24 and 1.76 in the last quarter. We had guided in financial year 21 that we would be 1% plus in financial year 24. We were able to cross it much earlier and above 1.5% throughout all the four quarters of last year. We expect we will continue to maintain this trend. We are clear that focusing on margins is the key to sustainable profitability and long-term success. It also reflects the health and efficiency of banks' operations. Our effort would be to focus on sustaining our growth momentum with healthy margins to ensure that our ROA is above 1.6 or 1.65 levels at all times. I am grateful to all the investors, analysts, and stakeholders for their confidence and continued support, which we will reciprocate to our better performance in the days to come. Now, I will be glad to respond to your questions, please. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask the question. Anyone? Who wishes to ask the question may press star and one to ask the question.
The first question is on the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, very good set of numbers for this quarter, sir. Uh, especially on the margin front, we managed to hold the margin, uh, like, you know, comparing that we had uh, one off in the Q3. So, quite good set of numbers. So, just uh, on the TD cost, uh, term deposit cost, so how do we see term deposit cost being out in FI25? Because you have given the guidance for the first half. So, just to understand that uh, part slightly better. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, thanks, Rakesh, uh, for the participation and uh, good words. So, TD cost, uh, if the current position continues, it may be continued at the more or less same level. As I was mentioning in the remarks, opening remarks, liquidity is not an issue, cost is an issue. Tomorrow, if we get better opportunities there to deploy the money, then it makes sense for us to raise the money even at a higher cost, then we can go for that. Or alternatively, if the liquidity is under strain, only by raising the deposit cost, we'll be able to get the deposit at the time we need to think Otherwise, currently, so we don't feel that there is a need to increase the TD, TD deposit rates at this stage. So if this be the case, in the next three months, more or less, with the inflows what we have, so the TD cost will remain more or less the same. And above all, the inflow of time deposits, if you look at it also, majority of them are coming below two years. So that way, uh, it will more or less be the same, and until unless we have a problem with the liquidity. Understood, sir. Sir, like suppose there is no rate cut even in this entire financial year, then uh, then what would be our stance on margin in second half, sir? Uh, I'll have to see that the reason is how the deposit cost, how it was, because there may not be any rate cut, but the liquidity is under strain. Then uh, if we have to raise the deposit cost, then automatically the margins will be compressed. So if something is not there, at the most, we think between 3.84, if at all these set of situations come up also, at that range we will be able to maintain, that's what we feel. Understood, sir. Understood. Great, sir. Great, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank you very much. I'll come back. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Prabal Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you. Am I audible? Yeah, audible. Thank you, sir, and congratulations on a very good quarter. Uh, so my so my first question was uh, even you know existing for this uh, one-off in employee cost, uh, the kind of initiative that you have been highlighting on the productivity side uh, that does not seem to translate into operating leverage for us. So how to think about this because uh, our OPEX to asset even adjusted for all this is, is extremely high. So how are you looking on this one? Yeah. So Prabal, it's a good question. Thanks for the compliments. No, you see. There are two components as far as employee cost is concerned. One is on account of the one time, uh, on account of IBA agreement and wage revision, what we had to provide. And second thing also I mentioned about the uh, rate reduction that way also uh, we had to provide. This is one part. Second thing is we have been investing on the resources. During the year itself, around more than 2,300 people we have recruited at different positions, but more or less everyone are linked to sales. So your point is what all we are spending is not getting reflected into the numbers. It is simple. Suppose you see the CASA, the fresh acquisition is going on. But simultaneously, other side, the existing to bank, the money is flowing out either into the real estate, hello, either into the real estate or uh, next to the market or stock market. These sort of things it is happening. So that way, had we not commenced with this sort of initiative, we would have landed into a big negative. So that way, we could insulate ourselves from this. This is one part. Second thing, if you look at it, this is not the question of one-time CASA, what we have got. It is the acquisition of the relationship. Once we have got the relationship, this one, 
perennially we will be able to get deep in this sort of a relationship so overnight we cannot look at saying that this opex has not been reflected straight into this one next thing also i'll tell you it is very easy to balance the ratio of opex to assets suppose if we go for a pool purchase from different organizations around 10000 crore so straight away there is no additional staff cost is involved there but the problem there is i may have to pay around 8.5 8.75 if i raise the deposit at 7.25 and 7.5 and 8.75 suppose if i take this pool my existing name is 4 and spread is also around that and this 1% will dilute my name so in that way i may be reducing the staff cost on one front other side it will be having a bearing on the name there it will come down by 20 basis points so that's why what we thought rather than all these things the low yielding assets on the corporate if we reduce it if we have not reduced our 1600 crore corporates in addition to that another p per 500 have we grown there our opex to assets ratio would have been much better much better so if both the ratios also if you look at it other expenditure is not concerned there is no much growth employee cost has gone up if we do not spend on this employee cost for the branches what we are going to open and the marketing of these casa accounts what is there and in addition to that we have taken more than 1000 people within the branches for deepening the savings bank accounts so it may be transitory now because of the market conditions and the real estate phase what is going on but the initiative what we have taken is going to give and yield results so we need to bear with us for the time being but you need to appreciate one thing with all this rigmarole and the working what we have we are able to achieve our roa what we have committed yes it really got us so congratulations on that uh, so my second question is when you uh, shift from retail to say other segments what is the yield differential that you that you can generate so let's say a 1 1 1% decline in a corporate book can generate how much how much yield differential for you so i can broadly tell you this way so let us say if you see our yield on advance is around 10% plus okay let us say our corp this commercial is at 11% now corporate if i am getting out of 8.5 8.75 on a back of the envelope if you look at it straight to 2.5% 2% straight you will get that so the money what all i am getting back from a big corporate 200 crore if i deploy straight in the commercial 10.5 something like that i'll get that so it is around 1.75 to 2% per cent straight we can get that so that is the reason it will be it was a very hard call for us to get out of 1600 crores when every bank is striving for top line growth but we thought saying that we need to bite the bullet if we need to get these margins well and the same money what all is available if you are able to deploy well other side why should we go for that we have gone negotiated pleaded with few of the corporates we got out of that 1600 crores got it so this improvement yield is more a function of loan mix change rather than say no, i'm sorry you are not sounding very clear and the trouble understand one thing 1500 crores is not going to change the 75000 crore loan mix complexion this is one of the factors i am telling no uh, my question was more generic because this quarter also loan uh, the corporate book as overall share was down 1% so this is the idea that's clear clearly 1600 crores when we have lost this quarter also we have lost we have lost in the sense that they are willing to continue with us we have told them it made more sense for us to rebalance this one okay so so the intent was to understand are there levels available in terms of yield improvement going ahead or uh, the loan mix is the only one that we are that we are sticking to so agreed but other levers are available like let us say with partnership fintech partnership we have gone for an mfi okay there the yields are better but we do not want to go overboard so 15% 16% over because we have started with the baby steps and our current portfolio under mfi is around 135 crores one year back we have started and initially we started a partnership with one partner having got some experience and all two more new partners who are good they have entered into partnership there those numbers also will kick in over a period of time next thing is about the bnpl where the margins are relatively better 
So progressively we have moved to around 1000 crores which we used to have around 200 300 continuously. So with some more experience there, rather than going for a plain vanilla personal loans there, uh, without any background we do it and all. This BNPL where Amazon also has a background check and our partner has a check, we also have a check. If we grow in those sort of areas, our margin improvement can be much, much better. And the third one is our commercial banking. Commercial banking, the yield, particularly a small business group, are relatively better. That is the reason you would have seen that progressively the loan mix has moved from 32 to 34, it may reach 35. So these are few levers, but undue calls and undue risk we will not take at this stage for the sake of improving the margins. Can I have one more question, please? Please, please continue. Yeah. Uh, sir, on the retail, uh, retail portfolio, retail loan portfolio, uh, there are only few segments which seems to be driving growth for us. When can we expect a more broad-based kind of because Dolphy has been has been driving this business and he has been trying to uh, scale all the parts of this business. So when can we start seeing that translating into numbers? That is trouble if you can look at the previous numbers two years back. The retail was growing in single digits, sometimes in 6%, 8%. That has moved to 18%. Okay, now it is for us to have the priority, how we need to go for that. We can start with personal loan straight, the growth would be terrific, but we thought we need to grow in a secured way. Secured way, it happened that way. The mortgages, if you see, around 27 to 30% that is growing that way, and home loans also started growing. And you can see some sort of a growth in dual loans. Now, consciously, the vehicle loans, we are slow. The reason is very simple. The market is so cluttered, the dealer margins what you pay, and the delinquency is what you have, the capital cost what you need to maintain on these, and with the recovery of these vehicle loans once they become NPA are very meager. Keeping all these things in mind, we thought, we will give priority to the existing customer that should not be a priority area. It may be a priority area for a few banks. We consciously thought that if my other products are not firing actually, I can come here. So you compare a vehicle loan with that of a mortgage loan. The mortgage loan lap with cash flows are there and the yields are much better and with my LTV of around 75 to 80 is there. Tomorrow something happens, my chances of 100% recovery are fair with higher yields. Naturally, as long as I am able to get the benefit there, we will go ahead. So dual loan is another area where we can work on. And personal loans already have clarified to you, rather than going for plain vanilla, we will work on uh, this BNPL. Educational loan in another area we are working. We have entered a partnership with a good firm, a partner who are experts and having this experience in the education loans. We will be working for high-end loans on this, and over a period of time, you will be able to see some sort of numbers there. Correct, sir. That is very encouraging. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. And thanks, Rahul. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Father Sabins, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Anand Dharma from MPA Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, you have uh, reported a pretty strong set of results during the current quarter. Uh, so hearty congratulations for the same. Uh, so my question was on the uh, uh, floating provisions. So you, this quarter also basically you have created some floating provisions. Uh, is it more of a precautionary measure or do you uh, see some asset quality risk uh, cropping up, number one? Number two, you said that you have a DNPL tie-up with Amazon. Uh, uh, how are the uh, you know delinquency trends uh, shaping up over there? Uh, how are basically you sharing, or basically the Amazon is basically sharing the risk on these loans with you, whether there is any FLDG arrangement over here. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, third basically is that uh, what is your ROA expectation for FY25, uh, wherein basically how the uh, uh, overall year cost and particularly your provisions are going to look like. Yeah, um, Sanand, thank you, thanks for the compliments. So regarding the floating provision, no, we are not visualizing and foreseeing any sort of stress. So our past numbers also, we have given guidance on each of the front. You would have seen our SMA 30 plus also, which is uh, around less than 300 crores and a book of 74,000 crores. So that way, 
if something account is not in SMI 30 plus as at the end of 31st March, the chances of that slipping into uh, NPA is remote. So that's where we don't foresee. And the entire team, more or less, they are geared up for monitoring collections. And we have formed a collection team also last year, before last year, I have explained. So that is working well. And uh, across the vertical, so they have this awareness that monitoring is very important. I'm not saying that the number will be at 300 crores, whatever it is, may go up also here and there. But it is absolutely under control. Floating provision has nothing to do with our sphere of growing, yeah, getting these higher numbers under the stress. So floating provision prudentially we provided. It can be for any purpose, particularly what we thought. Last year, there was a lot of discussion on the ECL from the Reserve Bank of India. So we thought there are many unknown unknowns. How the these guidelines will come up and all, how it transpires is not known. As a precautionary measure, we started making the 25 crore and we have created the 100 crore provision. It has nothing to do with the loan loss. Second thing coming to the BNPL. <coughs> BNPL agreed. So the delinquencies are absolutely under control. And it's not the question of Amazon, we are taking the FLDG. The partner who is an NBFC, we have re-entered into an arrangement for the last six months, it's FLDG arrangement as per the new guidelines which we have got from Reserve Bank of India. So we have got an FLDG of 5% under that. And the delinquencies, what all are there, are much below that. And we are absolutely covered under that. Now coming to the written on assets. Sir. So <clears throat> we have also mentioned saying that so our uh, last whole year is around 1.63. So we do not know uh, what are the unknown unknowns during the year which is going to come up. That is the reason we still say that around 1.6, uh, something like that, we can think of our uh, ROA. If uh, you must be seeing our numbers for the last 18 quarters, more or less what we have been indicating, we are better than that. So our intention is to excel everywhere and nowhere, wherever a possibility and scope is there, we will leave that. So that way, so we will continue to strive well and grow well. Sure, sir. Uh, so secondly, uh, uh, you basically have talked about adding about 80 odd branches in FY25. Uh, uh, you know, happy to hear basically for the branch expansion from your side. Uh, so what is your thought process in terms of, you know, why you want to add branches incrementally? Is it more uh, uh, that you're going to focus more on the liability side of it? Uh, which are the areas where basically you're going to add these branches? What is going to be the overall impact of these uh, branch addition on the uh, cost metrics? Yeah, you are perfectly right in saying that. Okay, because uh, you may think that digitally you can acquire, but the Indian mindset is somewhere a nearby a physical branch is there. In case of necessity, I'll be able to have touch base and I can get it clarified. But that situation and necessity may not come up at all in the digital world, but that feeling that I can approach someone is much better. So that is the reason what we thought. Let us go for 20 branches full-fledged where they'll grow very well both in advances as well as the liabilities. And the rest of the 80 branches there, so they will be light branches. Their major focus will be on the liabilities with a lean structure and all. But they will be going simultaneously for the cross-sell as well as the upsell. We will be going for a hub and spoke arrangement, wherein they will be linked to a hub. So that hub will be taking care of these sort of requirements of the advances and other things and all. So the feeder will be the uh, spoke and hub will handle these things. So that's the experiment we wish to make so that our presence is being felt in different locations. Sure, sir. Uh, that, that's it from my side, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Father Sevens, you may press star in one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of MB Mesh from Kodak Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. Um, so there's one question. These guidelines with respect to the infra one, it, it also covers commercial real estate. Um, we know that you know uh, most banks do have this particular book, uh, including yours. So can you just clarify as to uh, whether this guideline is applicable based on the exposure norms that you give to us in the annual report? Is it a meaningful one or a not a meaningful one? Yeah, so you are basically talking about the infrastructure and the DCCO, right, Sir Mahesh? And also for commercial real estate, sir. Because if you look at the annual report here, commercial real estate exposure tends to be high because you have some collateral there. 
So it gives you kind of clarify on that one as well. Yeah. So, so there is a there is a regulatory guideline on what is a project. So if you are doing your yeah, real estate, uh, taking a land and constructing a building uh, with large scale, we can classify under the project. Similarly, for the other manufacturing companies, wherever they are starting starting from the scratch, we call it as a project. So there is basically a infrastructure project, uh, like uh, uh, putting up the industries or the, the real estate construction project. This is what normally we classify. And if you take in our bank, the uh, both put together, both uh, the infrastructure manufacturing and uh, the real estate put together, will be a very uh, only less than uh, 12 or 14 uh, numbers. And if you talk about in terms of the DCCO, out of that, so only hardly one or two DCCO cases are we are facing it. As such, uh, they are these uh, circular guidelines are not material to our bank. Perfect. Oh, I have you also clarified. Let's say. Uh... Uh, if a textile company was to put a project, will that also be part of it? Textile company wants to put a project. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. See, uh, for example, if they, are, if they are acquiring some more uh, machineries, for example, existing textile unit, uh, buying a wind, uh, there is a solar or uh, the, this windmill, uh, we don't classify it under the project. But if a textile is starting from the scratch, buying off land, putting up the building, okay. and buying machineries, entire infrastructure are creating it, normally we call it as a project. Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. Perfect, sir. Then this is useful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thanks, Krishna Mahesh. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Suraj Das from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers. A couple of questions. In terms of uh, non interest income, over the last couple of years, obviously, you have done the franchisee and, and, and non interest income growth has been very good. Uh, but uh, what is the trajectory from here on? Can we expect still you know, higher than loan growth? Uh, uh, income uh, in the non-interest side uh, and also within this I think last year we did something like you know 200 crore of TWO recovery uh, this year nine month the number was something like 220 crores uh, so I am assuming for the full year that number would be higher uh, so uh, I mean what is the visibility there in terms of this TWO recovery supporting the overall non-interest income also so yeah, that is the first question. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Mr. Suraj. I think first point I need to clarify. In our, uh, in my initial guidance note itself, I have mentioned this year that I write off recovery is 342 crores. So it is much much higher than the last year number. Okay, so that way it is much better. And coming to the non-interest income, there are many levers. It can be the letters of credit, guarantees, and cross sell. So cross sell income also is located compared to last year. It has grown very well, and uh, we are trying to have few more partners and grow it much better. Whereas under the LCs and guarantees, if the textile sector is doing well, we would have got good business under the letters of credit, import and all these things. For the last three years, textile sector is actually struggling. One good thing is we didn't have any other stress on account of the textile because our customers are good, but the transactions which have come up are down. So that way we may not expect much from the LC, but we are focusing on the guarantee business. So wherein the non-fund based business will be there. So that may give us some sort of a edge over that. Coming to the recovery and the write-off, that is one of our focus area. And we are further strengthening our recovery wing for the growth, uh, for the recovery in the write-off. So that way what I feel, this trajectory, what we had for the last two to three years, it will continue and we will be able to do better. Okay, sure, understood. Yes, and uh, sir, on the uh, floating provision, so for last quarter you have done it, so will it continue for you know next uh, financial year as well, uh, since this is good time and you will continue to create provision? Um, no, there's a call, there's a call, board will take after the results, something is there, but for the time being what we thought, some good times are there, 100 crores we have provided, so maybe next quarter uh, is a call to be taken by the board for the next year. Okay, understood. Yeah. And the last question on the CASA side, I mean, any any thing, any any initiative that you, know, you are working on in terms of you know uh, this CASA? I know, I mean, uh, the overall franchise is very granular in terms of liability, but still, I mean, in terms of let us say current account growth, 
uh, I mean, uh, has been relatively slower versus, let us say, over the SME segment loan growth. So, in terms of, let us say, uh, on the CASA side, um, what are your thoughts, you know, to improve this CASA going ahead? So, there are many initiatives we have taken that one. So, what we thought is, uh, on the sales channel, what we have created. So, first level, we have taken around 1,200 people. And uh, it took some time for us to activate them because many of them have come from different banks. When they have come from different banks, understanding our culture and having a unified approach was difficult. And one good thing is they have brought out the best practices what others are following. We could get that. In the process, more than 24 variants of products we have structured internally. The team itself, they did it and all. We have brought into four, and uh, IT deployment is going on. With that, we'll be taking it forward. So that way, once these are in place, so the fresh acquisition will start working. Next thing what we thought was revitalizing the brand channel. The brand channel currently, they were acquiring some sort of an NTB who comes or once in a way. So, but with the sales channel doing these sort of things, we thought we can ask the branches to focus more on the deepening. So for that reason, we started taking customer relationship management and uh, branch relationship management manager into the branches so that they look after the deepening as well as the cross-selling. So we want to further increase the number of feet on street on the sales channel so that more number of branches can be covered. We also took another set of people. It is around 1,200 people at the branch level. We call them as a branch sales and service executives. These people at the lowest level we have taken, their job is to deepen these accounts and to get more balances under the CASA. So, but digital is uh, becoming too much, uh, this one and all smooth integration is happening. And the next is focusing on the business correspondent channel. There also, we have got the platform now, IT integration is getting completed. By June, once we complete, more or less around uh, 500 uh, business correspondents at different locations, we would like to go for that. So that's where we are trying to take many initiatives uh, to take care of the NR, HNI, uh, BC, Forex, uh, Trade Finance, all these different sub-verticals we have created. Each one, once they start firing, so we will be able to see some sort of attraction on all these fronts. Okay, sure, understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask the question. Next question is from the land of Chai Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, sir, and uh, congratulations on a very steady performance in the quarter after quarter. Uh, so my first question is on employee headcount, right? So they have increased uh, to around 9,000 odd. Uh, what is the sense, sir? Are we still adding more people on the feet on, feet on street or at overall level, or this is likely to stabilize there? Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Jay. Thanks for the compliments. No, agreed. Uh, just now, in the earlier question, I was responding, Jay. So yes, sir. we have taken sales channel around 1,300 people. And at the branch level, around 1,200 at the lowest level we have taken. So now, earlier, we thought of going for actually 2,600 for the sales channel. But we stopped it at 1,300 for one reason. When we started the process, we understood saying that the products what market requires are not there. And the digital enablements what we need to do to make these people to deliver were not there. Then suddenly we stopped the recruitment more or less at 1,300, and these people with the available infrastructure started mobilizing the business now. So now during the process of last eight months, these 24 new products have been added, and the digital enablements have completed. So now we are well off to take it forward to the next level. We may see another 6,800 we had to take it, but because with the earlier 1,300, a set of branches are covered, now there is a potential in many other branches 
by taking the sales channel we will be able to cover other branches also this is the first try on the sales channel second thing on the branch level channel also if the branches are extremely busy with the routine transactions their ability to actually handle and meet the customer will be difficult at the lowest level what we have taken uh, bsf is we are trying to have another channel called virtual relationship manager beyond a cut off they will be centralized virtual relationship manager they will be handling a set of uh, customers and uh, so that is another channel we will be adding that so that way if you look at it both will be maybe adding but we will ensure saying that the mobilized deposits what all are there are properly deployed and overall we will be able to maintain our ROAS understood understood sir uh, and sir uh, secondly on growth right so i heard you that you said that the fy25 growth should be 14% plus considering that we have best of the asset quality our you know cost of deposit is still one of the lowest amongst peer uh, 14% growth of course you are focusing on profitability as well but could this be uh, uh, i mean uh, a lower end number or You, you would you know uh, at this point of time you would think that 14% is a good enough number or you know it can actually move up as we deliver or as we these people join uh, etc okay yeah, you would have remembered last year also we quoted more or less around 14% okay we landed more or less at 18.5 if i add back the 2.5 what consciously we left it out so that way so the lower end it will be our intention is always to grow much better but only point is so there is no point in taking a deposit 7 and 1/2 and lending it 8 and 1/2 so that only adds my crr slr capital cost psl opex provisioning with all these things my top line may be growing and my ratios may be growing but it will not make any sense for the bottom line so this we are mindful of the fact so that's why growing in advances because all engines are firing now so 21% under the commercial banking if you see so year on year how the growth is coming there a set of new set of branches are coming into the fold and existing branches they have understood how they need to do the business and the tax has improved with all these things we will be able to grow well but provided other side we need to look at because another constraint is the 85% ld ldr loan to deposit so if that is not there the surplus slr what all is there on that we can raise on the borrowings we can raise and we can lend so with this framework what all is available we need to work on this that is the reason we felt saying that let us give a guidance of 14% great sir and the lastly if you can uh... highlight what is the run rate of neo on maybe monthly or quarterly disbursement has that gone up significantly or uh, how is it that trending now as i said neo we are integrating with uh, the main bank now so from now onward both of them will be working together we have an open market channel working there so on an average i can say around uh, 200 crore so i can say that so that way the growth will be coming from that channel and because they are integrating overall the growth will be much better uh, together understood that is very very helpful sir uh, thank you and all the very much thank you thank you jay thank you very much thank you next question is from the line of chintan shah from icici hello uh, yeah uh, thank you uh, sir thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on very uh, good set of numbers 1.7 percent roa uh, Yeah, also just I had one question on the loan rundown. So basically, uh, we are letting go uh, some low yielding advances in the corporate. Uh, so uh, is that now done, or do we expect some another advances probably which we will be uh, let go in FY25 with the low yielding or some weak assets as we call around 1600 crores of uh, loans we have let go for this year. So any ballpark number, but is the is there any still thing in the pipeline, or now we are done with this? Yeah. uh it is it is a, a work in progress chintan in fact if you can look at it so we have done that i cannot say anything saying that a ready made list is there where we will be getting out 
it is a question of opportunities other side available if other side on the ramp front particularly commercial banking the engines are firing much better then automatically the least yielding which is the asset i need to look at it and we need to engage with them we need to get out of that while on the other side mobilizing the deposit and lending will go here by rebalancing and redeploying the money from that side to this side if we are able to get 2% more why should we leave it so because there is an ongoing process we see till such time the deposit growth improves and just like a tap and then when i want if i am able to get the deposit then growing in corporate should that be an issue otherwise we have to be mindful of the fact saying that which is making sense only we need to grow so this work will be continued though i will not be able to quantify what is the number at this stage sir sir so this is very helpful and sir secondly this follow up on this so the weak account as we say uh, so what makes us believe that this account is weak so uh, how do we arrive at that uh, comment of weak means 200 crores having we let go because they were weak accounts so uh, basically some stress or uh, some delays in payments or how do we uh, quantify that one yeah yeah we have a concept called early warning signals early warning signals we have different parameters are there around 40 scenarios are there if this continuously our systems will be generating these sort of early warning signals based on that we will be knowing through a predictive analysis what can happen for these people and uh, in suppose incipient sickness is there or tomorrow it going to have a problem while engaging with them with the market intelligence what is hearing and all with all these things we felt saying that it is better much in advance we engage with them we get out of these accounts rather than getting stuck with these things so that's why the question of analytics early warning signals market intelligence all these confluence together we have come to a conclusion saying that we need to exit these accounts in fact the yields there were extremely good extremely good so there is another cause of concern if someone just like that they are paying that much of yield or pricing that itself is a first line of uh, early warning signal for us so 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 we can say that uh, these are standard accounts they are uh, paying accounts uh, but uh, only thing is we believe that they might uh, matlab turn that or they might give some stress and that is why we are exiting it early very correct absolutely are correct okay but so then uh, how do we exit so for example if the repayment is after 3 years uh, so means uh, do we ask the customer to close the loan or uh, how does it work here yeah, that way the customer will go to some other bank and it will be taken over by some other bank uh, so basically we just if the customer comes with a bt out proposal then we let it go and we don't ask uh, don't ask to retain the customer that way yeah not only coming with bt proposal few cases we are initiating the process for you to engage with some other banker they may go to nbfc also if the banker is not willing to do take it and nbfc has a better risk appetite he may pay a higher price and he may go there so we initiated the dialogue with the customer that they have to leave it and all this has been going on for more or less because overnight if you come and tell the customer tomorrow the one normal will leave if the question of 6 months to 1 year the discussions will be happening then progressively they will leave Okay, okay, okay. Understood. And so, just last thing on the uh, recovery from TWO number. Can you just uh, that's a data bit keeping question. The recovery from TWO number for the quarter. If you could just help with that, yes. Yeah. Quarter is how much quarter? Quarter. One thirty two crores, and for the whole year it is three forty. No, sorry to interrupt you. Chetan, can you mute your line, please? So it is one thirty two crores, Chetan, for this quarter. So, sure, sir, sure, sir. Sure. Thank you, thank you. That's it from my side. Yeah, and thank you and all the uh, all the rest. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take that as our last question. And now, from the conference, hold us to be Ramesh Babu, MD and CEO, for closing comments. Thank you all uh, for your interest in the bank and uh, for the good wishes and the compliments what you have conveyed. We will try to live up to your expectations and take the bank forward. Thank you once again. for sparing time for us thank you thank you very much on behalf of karun raisha line that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect once thank you